Blizzard just released some big plans they have for Classic WoW Season of Mastery. If you are still on the fence on whether you should try SOM, hopefully this will dispel most, if not all, doubts and concerns you had for this iteration of Classic WoW. Season of Mastery has been running on the beta for the last month and few weeks, and each week Blizzard kept adding, changing and iterating on more and more things, to the point where the game feels and plays like a different product now. But just yesterday, Blizzard dropped this blue post explaining their design design intentions in detail for the next 12 months of Season of Mastery. As a reminder, the game launches on November 16th, and you'll be glad to know that there will be an immense amount of content to dabble with at the very launch of the game. Raids are gonna be way more diverse in terms of class representation, the ranking up process in PvP is gonna be significantly faster, and most importantly, your character will be saved forever on the classic era servers once Season of Mastery servers are taken down. So let's go through the news and discover all of that together. Alright, let's start from the beginning. Throughout the last few weeks, we had the chance to test the new versions of Molten Core and Onyxia on the beta. Those have a ton of new mechanics added to pretty much every boss on top of having double the HP. And a lot of players struggled hard with those bosses. Even with infinite consumables and pre-raid bis gear available, I think only Stay Safe's raid managed to clear everything up to and including Ragnaros and also downed Onyxia recently yesterday. So I think those changes we're gonna talk about now are put in place directly to make MC and Onyxia easier without actually making them easier. So Blizzard basically announced that any piece of gear that was ever obtainable outside raids all throughout Classic will be available in Phase 1 from the get-go, bar very few exceptions that we're gonna talk about in a second. This brings a ton more content to the game at launch that should keep you occupied for a very very long time. The first and obvious avenue of gearing that was not available at launch in vanilla or classic was the Dire Mold Dungeons. Dire Mold is launching with Season of Mastery. This is big on its own, because this implies that, for example, mana users will not have to rely on the crappy level 45 water to regen their mana. Mage food will be available at launch from DM. A lot of big items also come from Dire Mold, like the tarnished elven ring for rogues, hunters, warriors and more. Satire's bow, hide of the wild and much more. Also, Dire Mall contains the books to obtain the royal seals for every class. Those are really good for certain classes, but not so good for others. Hunters, for example, will be keeping this trinket for a very, very long time. And I guess this also means that Dire Mall will be a great money-making instance early on as a rogue or hunter, if you can get one of those books by stealthing or using Feign Death. A lot of items that were added from patch 1.6 to patch 1.11 to dungeons and reputation vendors will will be available at launch. So you have the Druid Idols or Paladin Librams, for example, or the Turban from Drakisat in Ubers, huge item that will last you for a very long time as a caster. With AV, AB and Warsong Gulch available at launch, this also means that a lot of reputation gear will be available at launch, and lasting you for a very long time. One notable piece is the Sentinel's legs, specifically for warriors, but also for every class at this point. These legs are insanely strong for being available at launch. They compete with AQ gear. Then the big addition here is the Dungeon Set 2 gear, aka tier 0.5 being available at launch. This is good for a lot of classes at this stage of the game, but for rogues in particular, this set is absolutely insane. I remember when this was added in phase 5 when AQ launched, a lot of rogues in my guild went and farmed the full 0.5 tier set while waiting to get the full AQ tier set. That's how good this set is for rogues. But as I said, it's big for a lot of classes at this stage. The level 50 class quests are also available at launch. This means, for example, the Warlock Scythe, Soul Harvester. You can get this as early as level 50, and it will last you for a very long time. And obviously, you have Diamond Flask for Warriors. This is bis until AQ releases, and you can get Earth Strike from the Silithus questline. Speaking of Silithus, since the Dungeon Set 2 is available at launch, Blizzard is also enabling the Twilight Hammer Summoning Stones for the Elemental Templars and Dukes. This is not only great for getting your set 0.5, but those mini bosses also have some insanely good pieces that drop from them, like the Abyssal Plate Legs. Those are like mini versions of the Titanic Leggings, which funnily enough, Blizzard said are not available at launch, but you have those to replace them. But yeah, I barely scratched the surface on the 
the insane pieces of gear available at launch here. One thing is for sure, you'll be very busy once the game launches, and all throughout the season for the matter. There's a ton of content available at launch unlike what we had for the launch of Classic, which was basically just Onyxia and Molten Core. And remember, even though Blizzard said there's only two months between the phases, Phase 2 is actually not Blackwing Lair, but the world bosses Kazak and Azura goes. So you actually have four months between MC slash Oni and BWL releasing. Next up, Blizzard also mentioned here that they don't plan on bringing any major class changes to Season of Mastery. They say that they want players to come back to the game and play the classes that they're familiar with playing. Bug fixes are obviously on the table, but broadly speaking, classes will remain unchanged. They also mentioned here that a lot of players were concerned with the fact that now that bosses have doubled their normal HP, this will make casters and mana users in general less attractive to bring to raids since they will go out of mana all the time. Blizzard replied to that by saying that they doubled the HP to make sure that players engaged with all the mechanics a boss has to offer. And also, they looked at the data from raid testing on the beta and it seems like groups that were stacking warriors and rogues struggled more than those who had a more diverse class representation. And I can confirm that from doing those raids firsthand. A lot of those new mechanics are very punishing for melees. And you'll see melees having more downtime or just dying way more easily in general. It doesn't mean that it will stay that way all throughout the season, but at least early on that's how it looks like it's gonna be. So yeah, no plans to bring any class changes to this season, Blizzard says. Keyword, this season. Next up, the honor system. So in a previous blue post, Blizzard attempted to clarify the changes they're bringing to the honor system, but they went very technical with it. In this blue post, they're still incredibly technical and hard to understand, but at the very end they explain it with layman's terms. In Classic, if you were someone that was consistently the number one ranked player on your server every week, you could expect to reach rank 14 in 12 weeks minimum. In Season of Mastery, for that same scenario, you can expect to reach it in 6 weeks. So this basically means that ranking up is now twice easier. Twice easier still doesn't make it incredibly easy. The rank 14 was an insane endeavor in Classic and required weeks and months of playing 15 to 20 hours a day. But this will obviously make it significantly easier. You'll not see everyone and their mom running around in rank 14 gear for sure, but it will be easier for everyone to do so if they put in the effort. This is also a big avenue of gearing added right away from launch. And remember, there isn't two months between MC and Onyxia and BWL. There's actually four months, since phase 2 is the world bosses phase. Rank 12, 13 and 14 gear is among the best gear that you can get up to Nax Ramas for many classes. So this represents a big incentive. If you always wanted to reach the coveted rank 14, Season of Mastery is your time to do so. Lastly, Blizzard talks about their plans for what happens when Season of Mastery ends. Well, first off, they plan on permanently closing the servers once it's over. So this is really a 12-month thing only and will never be seen again. Well, not for a very long time at least, probably. And second, and most importantly, your Season of Mastery character or characters will be able to be copied to permanent already existing classic era servers free of charge. This is great news, and I think this will be one of the biggest incentives to try Season of Mastery for a lot of players. Because before we were told this, SOM really didn't look any different than a private server, where you knew your character would disappear one day. That's the reason why I think the vast majority of us don't want to play on a private server. What's the point? It's an MMO and I want to keep my character. And this is also interesting, because remember, leveling in Season of Mastery is way faster, and gearing up to an extent is also way faster, with all the content available at launch. So this means that for all intent and purposes, if you want to play vanilla, Season of Mastery will offer you an easier avenue to do so, to level and make your character more powerful than if you were to do it on a classic era server. Also, I wanted to mention this since Blizzard talked about this just an hour earlier than this big blue post that we just talked about. Blizzard mentioned two things here. First, Black Lotus as an item will now also have a chance to drop from all the high-level herb nodes around the world. So this makes Black Lotus sort of act like Fell Lotus from TBC, where you can get it from pretty much any herb given its high enough level. They also mentioned that Black Lotus will still exist as an individual node. 
And also, they are increasing the availability of Plague Bloom, Elemental Fire, Earth and Water. Those are all high-level reagents that were somewhat rare in Classic, which made their price very high in general and thus hard to get for people with less gold. Blizzard wants to make it more fair for everyone and they're making them more available across the board. Of course, raiding is harder and keeping up with the raids releasing will be frenetic. But outside of raiding, pretty much everything else is easier and faster. If you never had the chance to try Classic or did not enjoy it, Season of Mastery is the perfect time to do so. This product is looking way less like a hardcore thing made only for the veterans of Classic and more like a casual friendly toned down version of Classic, outside of raiding of course. We'll make a follow up video talking about whether Season of Mastery is casual friendly, so subscribe to not miss that and let us know in the comments if you think Season of Mastery will actually be more casual friendly than Classic. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I personally think this blue post is the most interesting one we got about Season of Mastery so far. It reveals a lot about what playing Season of Mastery outside of raiding will feel like, and it looks like it will feel awesome. There's a buttload of content to do now from the get-go. Also, the big info that your character will be saved forever on the Classic Era servers is gonna be big for a lot of players and will motivate people to play this more, I think. But with that, this marks the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.